2021 proved to be another year for Toronto police to be in the midst of controversy. Accusations of excessive force front and center in the middle of a pandemic. Interim Chief James Raymer and I sat down to discuss these and other topics. This just before he tested positive for COVID-19 himself. If you look back and assess on the year that was for the Toronto Police Service, how do you do so? Well, it's been a really challenging year for all our members, you know, and they've done some extremely good work. And I'm very proud of the work they've done and their professionalism, despite operating, you know, within a pandemic. But, uh, you know, we've had some had to make also some difficult choices, uh, you know, in, imposing our vaccine mandate uh, and ultimately now having, I think we're at 160 people that are out of, you know, approximately 7,400 that uh, or on an unpaid absence because they've refused to either get vaccinated or to let us know what their status is. The service has been under the microscope, specifically when it came to the homeless encampments and the clearing of the encampments. How do you look back on that and what do you think perhaps went wrong? Because we had had some success at a number of other encampments, we reduced the deployment of police officers for Lamport Stadium. And, and then what we were confronted with there was a very, uh, a large activist crowd and not homeless people, an activist crowd. And they were, you know, throwing cans at our officers, uh, full bottles of water, spraying them with a noxious substance. You know, there was some selected media clips that w went out there of uh, stuff that our officers were involved in. But as an organization, we've had the advantage to review all the body-worn camera, all the drone footage. And I think in the fullness of time, we might see a bit of a different narrative. I was there in the middle of it all. Um, there were people that did pose threats, but there were others that certainly didn't. And yet there was use of force directly in front of me. Do you condone those actions? When people want to um, protest uh, peacefully, we don't have any problems with it. But if they're going to uh, get involved in violence, there's going to be, inevitably, it's going to lead to an inter interaction. Uh, what I, I think is good about all of that, there was no significant injury that came out of that. When we did sit down one year ago, uh, a large topic at that point was obviously uh, anti-black racism and systemic racism and the recommendations that had been made for the force um, to try and make some difference. Do you think you've gained any more confidence in those communities at this point? Slowly, yes. Um, you know, when you look at the implementation team, it's a com combination of our members. Uh, we have three members from other police services as well. And then we have a number of community members and a community co-chair. We're in a very, very good place. And uh, I think you'll find as we progress through 2022, some very good work's going to be done. A couple of months ago, you came forward to talk a little bit about uh, shootings and homicide rate in the city. Nearly 400 shootings at this point, resulting in, I think I've seen uh, 40 deaths approximately at this point. You know, we've been doing a lot of work. Uh, we, we moved to a centralized uh, shooting response team, piloted in 2020, implemented it fully in 2021, because we're seeing a, a much better success rate in terms of uh, identifying and, and prosecuting individuals that are involved in those incidents. We're doing a lot more in terms of the prevention side with the city. And in, in, and in terms of our own bail compliance and diversion program uh, to try to keep people out of the gang culture. But the reality is we're the third biggest city in North America. We got a rapidly increasing population and uh, we have a significant gang membership here in the city. How has this pandemic continued to affect what you do? Uh, this has been a bit of a curveball for us. Uh, the Omicron variant has, has really changed the game and I think you know, as an organization, we're having to look at the reality of perhaps 10, 20, 30 percent of your organization getting sick and deal with that contingency. And so that's exactly what we're doing now is doing those plans and, and who will be redeployed and, and uh, making sure we're able to do that. Are we going to be sitting here a year from now uh, yet again or no, no. have somebody <laughs> stepping in? No, that's not going to happen. My wife would have something to say about that. Fortunately, we're in a great, great place in the organization. Uh, we have uh, great people working in the organization. We've got great people that have left the organization and getting experience in other areas. So the, um, you know, the, the prospect for the future I think is very bright uh, and, and, and I think the board will be thoughtful in the process and they'll select an outstanding chief.